first lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being translated means God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, as the angel had commanded him, took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Today is, right? Luke, do you know what today is? What's today? Do you know what today is? It's Christmas! Rosalie, you know what it is too? Ah, and I bet I could go further and further back and you'd all know. It's Christmas. There's lots of things we know. We read things from the Word and then we know what it says. And in three different places, Mary and Joseph were told, and so they knew, what they were supposed to name their little baby. The angel came to Joseph and said, you're going to have a baby. He's going to save his people from their sins. You shall call his name Jesus. Now, do you know what the name Jesus means? You think you know, Rosalie? It does mean the Lord. It means Savior. Somebody who will save us. A long time before that, a prophet said, the Lord will be born. He shall be called Emmanuel, which means he'll be with us. And when he did come with us, then he was our Savior. You know, when the angel appeared to Mary also, not just to Joseph, but to Mary also, the angel said, you're going to have a baby. And she also told him, told her, name your baby Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. So you know those things. You know what day it is. And you know that Mary and Joseph were both told, to call their baby Jesus. Is it good to know things like that? Yeah? No? Is it good, good to know things? It's good to know stuff like that, isn't it? But you know what? Sometimes you know things that doesn't mean you understand everything, right? For example, I know this is glue. Do you understand how glue works? You do? You know? Oh, that's great. If you really understand it, this is not glue. But they're both white. I know they're white, or they're white, whiter than other things. But if I poured this on stuff, you think it'd stick together for a long time? No. This is coleslaw. But this is glue. I don't really understand. I know it's glue, but I don't understand. There's lots of things I don't understand. Here's another one I don't understand. I mean, I know that this metal springs back into shape so I can clasp things with it. Right? You know, you know that, right? Do you understand how that works? This metal doesn't spring back. And no matter how many times I bend it, I can bend this metal over and over again. What happens if I bend this metal over and over again? Do you know what happens? You know what's going to happen? What do you think, Thomas? You think it's going to break? Uh, you know that. I don't understand, though. I know there are different kinds of metals, but... I don't really understand all that. I, I don't have all the understanding that I need. Here's one more thing. I bet you, you know the difference between this and this. Right? You know what that is. It's turned off, but it's, it's a cell phone. And I could make a phone call. And this is not a cell phone. And I can't make a phone call. What is this? You know what this is? There's a lot of it up there. It's, it's, called, it's a bread. It's a kind of bread. Now, I could eat it, and I couldn't eat this. I know that. 
But there's a lot of things I don't really understand about a cell phone. Who understands everything about cell phones? Right. We know this is a cell phone and this isn't. But as far as understanding, so there's so many things that we know about, but we don't really understand. The last one I'm going to mention is Annika is playing music. I know she looks at the notes and she reads them, she practices, and then this beautiful music comes out. I know that. Do you know that too? Yeah, it's wonderful. Thank you, Annika, for playing. Beautiful, beautiful music. Do you guys understand music? How harmonies all work and why some notes go well with others? Do you understand all that? I don't either. So what does that have to do with Christmas time? What do you think? We know Jesus came on earth to save us. Do we understand everything about it? Who understands everything about the Lord's birth? I don't understand all of it. So there's three things I want to talk about. Knowing, understanding, and then living. If I be living what I understand about the Lord, I could shorten that to say I believe. I be living. Believe. So it's living that's most important of all those three things. Because we can know a lot, but knowing everything about Christmas? No. We can understand a lot. But understanding how the Lord came to save us, we may hear about the stories, but not really understand everything. And we're not supposed to be able to understand that. We can't understand everything. That was the Lord's work to do. Similar to when you're at home, and your parents tell you to do something, or you're in school and your teachers tell you to do something, you might know you're supposed to do it, but you might not always understand. You might not always understand. And they can see things that you can't see. The Lord could see everything. And we see so very little. The Lord knows everything. And we know a few things. The Lord understands everything. We understand some things. And the Lord is life. He gives us to live. And we feel like we live because we receive life from the Lord. Christmas time is a time we celebrate that the Lord came to live in a body just like we have and came to share all the knowledge He could possibly share with us to give us all the things that will make us happy even if we don't understand. But He says, please live the life I share with you. If you love me, you will do these things. If you love me, you will live. And living the things the Lord taught us is what's called believing. You believe those things that the Lord tells you. Yes, it's Uncle Michael. Thank you. So Christmas time is the time to love the Lord back. Celebrate that He came on earth to save us. Celebrate that His grace and compassion never end. He will give us His life always. And Christmas morning, we celebrate that. We open gifts and we love each other. We try to express our love for one another. We try to share the joy of Christmas. We know various people. We understand a little bit of some things. But the most important thing is to believe, is to live the life that the Lord gave us to live. If you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. This is the way we show our love. And on Christmas time, it's best of all, one of the best days to show that love for the Lord, to do those things which he commands. You know, the Lord could have been born in a big, wonderful palace. And I want you to look up here because it's a good thing to, to recognize that we've made the church look more like the place where the Lord was born. It's wonderful the other days when we have the church set up with an altar and the various things that are up there, the candles. But this morning and last night, these last couple of days, we've had the church look like this to remind us that the Lord can come into our own minds and our own hearts even if we don't have lots of really, really great things. The sheep and the food, the manger where the Word is seated, those things stand for the very little that we have. It's not a magnificent mansion. It's not a big palace. It's not a castle. The Lord could have been born in those places. But He comes to us with the little bit that we have like the little sheep and the innocence that's there represented by the sheep. By the little bit that we have, the small manger, it's not a huge, huge feeding trough. It's just a small small amount of things we can hold in our minds and know and understand. 
But the Lord comes there to us. And he begins his life and continues to live in us in those things. So I wanted to point that out, just to look at that and think about what it is that we're receiving from the Lord. It's life. It's the ability to know and to understand, but most importantly, to live the life the Lord came on earth to give us. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The Lord did that then and continues every day to do that for us. Amen.